Hello, my name is Ralph Reedus. I'm an addiction recovery coach. I'm the host of the Take Your Life Back Today show. As an addiction recovery coach, I want to share something with you. Let me be crystal clear to leave an everlasting impact upon you. Imagine, just imagine being buried alive. You're in a coffin, but you know you're not dead. You try to get out of that coffin. You try lifting the lid, but the enormous weight upon the lid prevents you from opening it. You try banging on the lid, hopefully to unsettle the dirt. Maybe somebody might notice and start digging their way down towards you. This is what it's like to find yourself at the lowest point of alcohol and drug addiction. You know you need help. You know you can't do it on your own. But you don't know where to turn. In reality, there are people standing by your grave. You just don't know that. You just think you're going to die. Usually, though, people habitually abusing drugs and alcohol don't think about death. In order to feed an addiction, you have to be great at repressing the fear of death. I often ask you, my audience, has it ever occurred to you that by abusing drugs and alcohol, you might take something that God had given you. Jesus had given you life. And if you're selfish enough to not care about that, what about taking your life from the people that need and want you most? Your mother, your father, your brother, your sister, your husband, your wife, children, even your grandchildren. With this, let me leave one last thought. Don't be like the person that I just spoke about that waited and waited and waited and didn't seek help. Instead, pick up the phone and call me at 844-405-HELP and I promise I will help you take your life back. For your life is gone. Folks, when you take your slippers off at night, don't put them by the edge of your bed. Stick them way under your bed. Way under your bed. That way in the morning, when God gives you the gift of life by letting you wake up for another day, you'd get on your knees to go and get those slippers that you left last night way under your bed. And while you're on your knees, utilize a thing I call knee mail. K-N, double E mail. Knee mail is when you're on your knees and you communicate with God. And you say, thank you, God, for a home, clothing, food, health, relationships. And you ask God for guidance and direction, forgiveness and mercy. Utilize knee mail every time you retrieve those slippers in the morning. Because remember, if God didn't allow you to wake up, you wouldn't be on your knees in the first place. So from your lips to God's ears, thank Him each and every day for another brand new day. Now put those slippers on. Stand straight up and walk with God 24-7. The power of prayer will get you the results that you are looking for. It might take time. But be consistent. Get those slippers every day, excuse me, every night under your bed so that every day you're on your knees retrieving them. <clears throat> be who you are, my friends, not what others want you to be. What does that mean? Think about it. Be who you are, not what others want you to be. What does it mean to be who you are? Someone once told me that is not what you want to be, that makes you special. It's how God made you that shows you your true colors and makes you a very, very unique individual. A lot of people in this world are not what they appear to be, whether it's trying to impress others or even trying to fit in. I used to be like a lot of those people. All I ever wanted or all that I wanted was to fit in and be like everyone else, to impress other people, to think or have them think that I had more than I actually had. I learned that trying to be like someone else won't get you anywhere in life, especially if they want you to act in a certain way. Some people are affected by the way others treat them. I believe that no matter how much you want to be like someone you're not, it's better to be yourself 24-7. When you are not yourself, other people respect you less. But when you are yourself, people respect you and love you for who you really are. I used to be one of those guys who followed everyone, wanted to go upstream with all the other salmon fish. But as time went on in my life, I've learned to go the opposite, to be who I am, to be who God created me to be. I didn't know who I was or what I even wanted to be at that point. It was a difficult struggle for me to overcome the fear of being judged for who I really was. I didn't appreciate what I had. When I used to hang out with a group of so-called friends, I acted like them. I was a follower and I thought that if I didn't act like them, I wouldn't be accepted by them as so-called friends. 
I learned that when you are not yourself and you're trying to be someone else, you're not, you become a faceless person with no identity. It's hard for me to, uh, for you to be yourself, especially when others want you to be like them. Those folks, those are the people that want you to shut down or shut you down, I should say, and make you feel bad about yourself. You just want to follow the other person and become just like them. But that takes away your identity, my friends. To be who you are means to not listen to what other people want you to be. It's about loving yourself for who you are and to let God keep you as he created you. To be yourself means you must appreciate and love who you are no matter what people think. No matter what might be wrong with you and for those who want you to be other than that are very selfish. A lot of people struggle through that daily. I used to care what people thought of me but a wise friend told me one time I shouldn't care what other people think about me but should be myself and appreciate that God created me with my flaws and my negatives in life, God created me. And with the power of praying, the power of Christ, I can correct all these little things that are negative in my life. I mean, in my life, I should say. Don't do what other people want you to do. Do what God wants you to do. Everyone has a personality and can use it to his or her advantage. People that tell you to be someone that you're not, well, I don't know. Are they really your friends? Think about that. People who want you to be someone and you're not, are they really your friends? I believe that you should do the things that you believe in and not what others believe for you to believe. For example, if you think that you want to play a sport but your so-called friends disagree, I think you should play anyway. Do not do what they want you to do. Do what you think is good for you. If you love, if you love something, go for it. Don't let anyone hold you back and or hold you down. To being myself means that you have to love yourself and set aside your flaws. You need to know that God made you in a special way and he loves you just the way you are even though you are not perfect. If you remember that God loves you and, and what other people say really doesn't matter because he made you special and unique and all the blemishes make you. Remember God also created those people that are telling you to change. God's not making them change. God loves you no matter how you are and who you are. But you can perfect yourself. Take a self-reflection of yourself. Look in the mirror and say, what do you think God wants me to do today to make me a better person? Go out, help people. Your smile can add 10 more smiles of people around you. Don't be someone you're not. You have negatives, so do I. You have issues, so do I. But God gave you those issues and those negatives. With the power of prayer, you can conquer anything in your life. But the power of other people pers persuading you to be somebody you're not is no good. Take that self-reflection today and ask God to guide and direct you 24-7. And with that, may God bless you.